Welcome to your weekly astrology overview and zodiac forecast for week commencing the 1st of July. I'm going to share with you shortly the event chart for the week that we can all collectively relate to. And because we have the Cancer New Moon on Friday, it's an exciting week for sure. But please stay with me. I will go through each of the tar zodiac signs from Aries through to Pisces to give you a flavour of what you can expect in terms of your ascendant, sun or the moon. If you're new to my channel, it's lovely to have your company. If you have any thoughts, please feel very welcome to share them. This is very much a community. If you're a returning visitor, as always, all your views and interactions are truly appreciated. As I've been sharing recently, about 50% of people who enjoy my videos are not subscribers. If that's you, please support the channel and help it to grow by clicking that subscription button, but also the bell notification symbol. Every time I drop a video, you should get an alert. I'm a consulting astrologer. If you'd like to have a one-to-one -one with me, please see below where you can check out my testimonials. But also, if you'd like to get your free written daily horoscope fired to your device each morning, uh, please see the link for that below. I also provide the overarching astrological influence each day, so that helps us to see the big picture as well as enjoy our zodiac forecast. If you're a patron, thank you so much. I upload a lot of extra information to my patrons, and you can become one from $3 a month. And finally, if you'd like to take advantage of my special astrology packages for written reports, please see below. There's 30% off, and these will give you a fantastic amount of extra information and insights at a really economical price. On the screen now, I'm showing the event chart right at the start of the week. And you can see that we've got a big cluster of energy in the sign of Cancer. Cancer, very much about nurture, protectiveness, security, can be to do with our home, family, our inner world, our emotions. But we do have Mercury pretty late in the sign of Cancer. And in fact, Mercury is going to be saying au revoir on Tuesday, but not before it forges a magical link to Neptune right at the start of this week. And that's just suggesting for all of us that instincts can guide us very effectively this week. But also, Mars, the planet of passion, drive, instant gratification, in the earthy sign of Taurus, is, a, is an, a really influential player this week. It's going to be forging a great angle to Venus in the sign of Cancer, but also to Saturn in the sign of Pisces. And we've also got Venus. As she moves forwards, she's going to be applying in an excellent trine, which is very enabling to the energies of Saturn too. So really, this is a week which is not just focused on those Cancerian energies, we need to be mindful of the players in Taurus, but also in the sign of Pisces. And as we come into this new week, of course, it's also a new month. And you can see the moon is in Taurus, which is a great position for the moon. It's exalted in Taurus, and that's linking magically to the sun. Mars, as I mentioned, to Venus. But key... Uranus also to Mercury. So thinking outside the box about resources, that Taurus energy, or our values, is going to be important, as well as tuning in more instinctively, which is what I feel that Neptune and Mercury are asking us to do. But there's a big shift on Tuesday, because Mercury moves out of the sign of Cancer and into the fire sign of Leo. Mercury and Leo is bolder. It also can be quite attached to pride, particularly around the expression of ideas. So we may encounter someone through the start of this week who has quite an entrenched way of thinking or expressing themselves. And one of the reasons that this energy is going to be ramped up is that Mercury is going to be in an opposition with the power broker of the Zodiac, Pluto, exactly on Wednesday. 
and that, that could be the point when we do encounter some kind of tussle but it may also be the point where we have to stand up for something we feel passionately about because remember the sign of Leo is a fire sign but it's also ruled by the sun so if there's something creative that you've been visualizing and you want to bring into reality then it is important to back your plan to have passion about your idea but just be aware that someone else may see what you're uh, trying to bring into life in a very different way so there could be a polarization of opinions at the heart of this week but as the week goes on we do have by Friday that new moon in Cancer the reason this is so um, important is the moon rules Cancer and also because if we think about the overall journey of the moon through the year in terms of the new moons the second most influential new moon could be argued to be the Leo new moon because the sun rules that sign and the new moon is when the moon and the sun are unified so we get the best of both their energies but it could be argued the sun is not at its greatest in the sign of cancer but clearly the moon is so it's asking us to really be in tune with that need to feel things talk about our emotional experiences be protective think about the ways that we can create a, a nicer environment for ourselves over the following four weeks it would be an excellent time as this week can be as well to be making some changes to where we live whether it's decoratively whether it's physical changes with Mars in that supportive role you know if you have been planning some do-it-yourself this could be the week that you get it over the finishing line it's just on Friday that that new moon is in a t-square with the nodal axis now if you recall that shifted in July last year the north node the point of destiny into the fiery Aries the south node into the sign of relating Libra we've also got Chiron in the sign of Aries and that's very much to do with our identity and really that's what the north node's asking us to do work on our identity so as much as we may want to uh, put a lot of energy and time into our inner world or our homes or our family family life that nodal axis just suggests that we do need to be mindful of how we connect to others and sometimes we can stick with what we know because it feels secure and safe a bit like a well-worn pair of slippers but actually that stops us being more daring so as much as it's good to appreciate the cancerian energy it's also good to appreciate where it might in some ways be inhibiting us so if we're sticking with a relationship a job or even where we live simply because it's familiar that's not necessarily good for us so I feel the nodal axis in a way can be a bit of a prompter to rethink if we are playing a little too safely but for sure the energy in the sign of Pisces this week very much to do with past experiences knowledge the accumulation over a long period of time that can feed into some of our emotional family and home-based decisions this week as can the cluster of energy in the sign of Taurus because very often money is important but also stability and that's what the sign of Taurus represents so this is a week where I feel we can make progress around improving our environment or immersing ourselves in very peaceful places or locations enjoying water for sure um, but also being open to trying to progress things and I think Mercury bursting into Leo does give us that little bit of a lightning point to spark us forwards and we shouldn't ignore uh, the things that excite us just because we want to maintain an absolute level of security because even if we try to do that uh, none of us has complete control over life things can always happen outside our control please stay with me now as I go through each of the 12 zodiac signs from Aries through to Pisces welcome Aries to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 1st of July for the ascendant the sun or the moon we need to be mindful as ever of your ruling planet Mars Mars starts this week 
in a fantastic angle to Venus. If we think about Mars and Venus in terms of relating, Mars is that desire, that neat, raw uh, desire, and Venus is much more coquettish. It's much more about using charm and the sweetness of relating and romance, but they are on excellent terms. If you are meeting someone this week, or you're with an existing partner, it could be an enjoyment of good food and good wine that really is something you can celebrate together. So that's lovely, your ruler Mars right at the heart of things at the start of this week. But we've also got that big cluster of energy in Cancer. And Cancer for you is a time of the year for you to take a little bit of a breather. And just that pause helps you to disseminate whether there are some big changes you want to make later on. Now, as Mercury moves into your sister fire sign of Leo on Tuesday, followed by Venus on the 12th and the Sun on the 22nd of July, those are really going to see your month come to life in a very dynamic and exciting way. In fact, your ruler Mars is going to be moving on the 20th into a very fast moving location for the following six weeks. So this pause that you're enjoying at the present time, it's one that you can really appreciate because I can assure you the latter parts of July are going to get really, really uh, lively. But Mercury moving into Leo is also a great chance to take something that you've been, been mulling over and action it. And it's also a bit of a lighter place for Mercury to be. So you could find your sense of humour gets sparked up from Tuesday as well. But Pluto, the planet of change, is in your sector of friendship, but also your long-term future. And that there may be something that you want to do more creatively that doesn't quite fit with your current long-term plan. And you could find yourself with uh, some very intense discussions over the following few days. But the great thing about these energies that you've got in Cancer at the start of this week, and also those in Taurus, which is very much to do with stability, and the instinctive energies in your 12th house of Neptune and the more structural energies of Saturn, they're all helping to anchor you, I feel, before you make any firm decisions. So even if you start engaging in quite a lively way with the help of Mercury, you've still got some space and time to just work out exactly what you want to do. And I think the launch point really will be that new moon. But that new moon, of course, does clash with the point of destiny in your sign. And it's important uh, if you are someone who's very creative and artistic, or you like to do things that are more action oriented and daring, which is often the Aries way, that you're not being too protective, that you are embracing that very uh, fiery side of your nature. And therefore, there could be a little bit of a, a trade that you have to make. So uh, if a situation is appealing because it means you can stick and you know exactly what you're going to be getting, or there is another situation where it may require you to be a bit more adventurous, that could be something that just comes up for some areas anyway towards the end of this week. I hope you have a great week. Thank you so much for joining me. And if you've yet to subscribe to my channel, please do so now. Welcome Taurus to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 1st of July for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. On the screen now, I'm sharing your event chart right at the start of the week. Now, as ever, we need to be mindful of the location of your ruler, the charming Venus, and that's in Cancer, which is very caring, can be very empathetic, but also because for you it's the third house, that's very interactive, very much about expressing your emotion. But if we look at the planets in your own sign, it includes the moon, which loves being with you, exalted in Taurus, the passion of Mars, but also the innovation of Uranus. And they're all linking to those planets that are clustered in Cancer. So if you feel passionate about something this week, or you want to get something off the ground, you're going to have lots of opportunities to really gain traction. It's all about just making the momentum work for you. But also, 
Those energies in the sign of Pisces, which comes through initially Neptune's link to Mercury, suggesting that there could be some kind of instinctive draw to the communications you have as the week begins. But Saturn's also forging a very solid link to your ruler Venus, which peaks on Wednesday. If there is someone that you're collaborating well with, and it could well be a friend or around a group interest, or some kind of collective effort that could go from strength to strength but it does fall to you in a way Taurus to have the confidence to take the lead now as the week goes on on Tuesday Mercury moves from this chatty interactive location into a more thoughtful one the fourth house but it also goes opposite Pluto the planet of power but also of change and that's been pushing you since the 21st of January to think very carefully about your role in life. Now, whether you've wanted to become more ambitious, more goal orientated in some kind of new way, or you've wanted to leave something that's sustained you for a very long time, perhaps professionally, those are big subjects that you've been working with. What Mercury does is gets you to think about how this will be from a more emotional perspective but you could also encounter someone whose view of what you want to do really varies from yours so there could be a little bit of a battle of wills right at the heart of the week but on friday that glorious new moon just like those energies at the start of the week is in your third house and that's really asking you to try to share your your ideas your thoughts to connect with people, to network wherever possible, and most of all, where it feels right. So that's the combination of the Cancerian energy, but the third house, and the cluster of energy in your sign at the start of this week is really asking you to take the initiative. So if there's someone you want to get in contact with, perhaps through your work, about a job, through an interest in your locality, if there's someone you want to build a, a closer connection to, this week offers some really positive opportunities. But also, of course, Venus is about romance. And if there is somebody that you want to try to reach out to and start to cultivate a closer connection, I think the combination of the Moon, Mars and Uranus all in your side give you just that extra bit of thrust to go for it but it's the way you go for it that's going to be the key. But I feel that you can express yourself with a lot of subtlety, a lot of skill, and that's going to be enhanced by the new moon on Friday. But what about that nodal axis, which does square up to the new moon? Well, for you, for sure, it is in your 12th house, the point of destiny. And maybe is that there are going to be a few doubts or uncertainties if you are wanting to try to do something dull, but have maximum faith in yourself. Because even if something doesn't work out quite as you would like, I feel the experience will teach you a lot, but you could, just could, have a major breakthrough this week. It's been great being with you, Taurus. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, please do so now. Welcome Gemini to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 1st of July for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. On the screen now I'm showing your event chart right at the start of the week. Jupiter continues to give you a lot of encouragement to show maximum confidence in what you want to achieve. But you do have the Moon, Mars and Uranus in the 12th house. The 12th house can make us a little bit less self-assured. It's just that all of them are supported brilliantly by the players in the sign of Cancer, which of course is very much to do with feeling, but for you, it can be about resources. So if there is something you, you've been working on behind the scenes, and it is to do with a financial proposal, I feel it could shape up really positively this week. And don't hold back from using imagination as your ruler Mercury aligns with Neptune right at the start of the week. But also it's possible in a romantic uh, dimension that someone's creeping up on your senses. 
but they may not express their interest in you in a verbal way at this stage. It could be that you need to look out for someone's body language around you. But once Mercury darts into Leo on Tuesday, the pace of your situation is really going to pick up. And you're going to see more of this on the 12th and the 22nd of July as Venus and then the Sun move into Leo. But for now, there is still a lot of emphasis on the foundations of your situation. But what we are going to have is Mercury going opposite Pluto. If there is someone you encounter who's not so enthused about what you've got to offer or say, it could end up being quite the battle of wills. So if you do encounter someone with a different worldview, just try to be very cool about it. Know that subtlety will be just as important as a might is right attitude, but just be aware that you could encounter someone who tends to be very dogmatic and wants to insist that their way of approaching something is for the best. But with Saturn right at the top of your chart, just being as patient as possible around your goals and ambitions is really important at the moment, but your tactics are just as key. It's been a pleasure being with you, Gemini. I hope you have a great week. And if you've yet to subscribe to my channel, please do so now. Welcome Cancer to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 1st of July for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. Now the big focus this week could well be on your new moon. But you know, there's so much else going on. Not least that at the start of this week, the Sun, Venus and Mercury are all in your sign, forging dazzling alliances to other planetary players. This gives you an opportunity to start this week with a spring in your step. It is true that Jupiter, the planet of hope, faith, but also expansion, is in your 12th house, which is more reflective, but that's forging a pivot between the moon, your ruler, and also the sun in your sign. So some information that you download at the start of this week can be very important in terms of your progress. But also, so can your connections, which brings us to that new moon. A new moon is an opportunity to recast our identity, to charge up our individual plans and hopes with extra determination and single-mindedness. But this is a new moon that's in a T-square with the north and south node axis. So it's important to just reflect that the North Node in your 10th house is very much to do with your connection to the wider world, but also that uh, almost imperceptible pull towards our direction of travel. And it's possible an opportunity can come up in the following month, which could see you raise your profile. It could give you the chance for success or to achieve a breakthrough, but will it mean compromising a part of your approach or individuality which is really important to you. So that's just a possibility that can unfold. But the links at the start of this week between the Sun, the Moon, the Sun and Jupiter, Venus and Saturn and Mercury and Neptune are all very, very dynamic. But then on Tuesday with Mercury moving into your second house, if you have been working on an idea that really does give you a sense of excitement, you could start to see your financial situation improve. But just be aware, if you're discussing joint finances, there could be a moment of tension as Mercury goes opposite Pluto and someone may see a situation in a starkly different way to you. It's been a real pleasure being with you, Cancer. Have a great week, and if you've yet to do so, please help the channel to grow and subscribe. Welcome, Leo, to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 1st of July for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. On Tuesday, Mercury moves into your sign, which is a spark for the coming Leo season. That's going to pick up momentum once Venus joins you on the 12th and the Sun on the 22nd. But you know, this is a week of 
let's say, transition because we've still got a lot of energy in your 12th house, Cancer. That's very much about reflection. And um, of course, we've also got the new moon this week, which occurs on Friday. So this is a week when you can start to grapple with something that perhaps has been in the back of your mind, Mercury, bring it into the present as Mercury moves into your sign and start to gain traction. But there's another part of your situation which suggests you may be in some ways clearing up some loose ends or at least thinking very deeply about certain parts of your situation, particularly a relationship. Because with Venus in your 12th house, that can be a time when things come to a close. But it also can be a time when we just think very, uh, very carefully, perhaps reminisce, feel very nostalgic about people from our past. So it doesn't necessarily have to be in a more challenging way. And also Venus forges a very steady link with Saturn. So if there is something you're doing behind the scenes financially, that can be good. But also Venus forges a brilliant link to Mars in a very proud and loud part of your situation. But it does suggest this overall uh, connection between the energy in Taurus, which is your 10th house, and that interaction with the world at large. And the 12th house, which is very much to do with what's behind the scene, that you are going to be doing some research or very careful thinking. And that all crests with that new moon on Friday, but there is a T-square with the nodal axis. And that's very much about ideas. So if someone does uh, suggest you think about or talk about something that's a little more sensitive, try not to just discount it. And also try not to feel that in some ways they're trying to undermine you because 12th house energy and new moons are not easy. You could find some energy comes up this week which does make you feel quite tender. But try to go with it because it's very important not to d dismiss emotion. But if you just stay in the moment, process whatever feelings you have, you then can create the space to really welcome in those new ideas that are starting to show up with Mercury. I hope you have a great week. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, please do so now. Welcome Virgo to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 1st of July for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. On the screen now, I'm sharing your event chart right at the start of the week. And there continues to be the Friendly Collective in House 11. Very much to do with your social interactions, your network, group activities, but also your future plans. And perhaps more subtly, but very powerfully, those hopes that do go beyond the more material world. But there's a terrific link between your ruler Mercury in that sector and Neptune in your sector of relating. There could be someone that you're drawing closer to through a shared interest, a hobby, a sports team, or perhaps even romantically, where there's just something imperceptible that's pulling you together. That's very exciting but also Saturn in your sector of relating, which may have caused some mischief over the last year and a quarter, making you much more conscious of what you will and won't accept, is forging a very stable link to Venus. If you are in a relationship and you're happy, there's a sense at the moment that you can really invest even more with confidence. But Jupiter, the planet of growth, of optimism and good fortune, is right at the top of your chart. This is very much to do with your worldly interactions. Self-belief and positivity can really take you far. And Jupiter forges a great link to the moon in the part of your situation to do with discovery and also to the sun in the same sector as Venus and Mercury. So it may be a case of who as much as what you know, but building up alliances and be very 
being very open-minded about who those alliances can be is a big part of this week's potential. Indeed, there could be someone, if you're single, who you're finding is really rather attractive. Mars in the ninth house suggests this could be a person who's got quite a, a vigorous personality, but lots of sex appeal. Maybe it's you that's emanating this. Don't underestimate that uh, amount of energy that you can exude this week. But on Tuesday, Mercury, your ruler, does move into a sheltered location and goes opposite Pluto. If you have been humming and hawing about what to do with your career since the 21st of January, this week could see you having some big conversations about this. But by Friday, we have the new moon. New moons are a glorious opportunity to set our intentions, as you know. This one's super for those friendships and those collaborative efforts but it is challenged by the nodal axis. And if money or different values are coming into the equation, do be mindful of that. You can't ignore where you're being drawn in terms of the North Node in particular, your direction of travel. You need to feel that if you're invested, it is for the long term. So if there's someone you're really attracted to and maybe they're wanting something that's a bit more fleeting, I feel if you are wanting something that's more stable, you do need to set your boundary in that regard. Have a great week, Virgo. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, please do so now. Welcome Libra to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 1st of July for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. On the screen now, I'm showing your event chart right at the start of the week. And you can see we've got a big cluster of energy at the top of your chart, the most visible area, the 10th house. This is where we can achieve recognition, acclaim, raise our profile and be ambitious. Now, of course, we've got the new moon on Friday in this area, which gives you an even greater opportunity to do those things. But the sun... Uh, Venus, your ruler, and Mercury are all connecting brilliantly to other planets as this week begins. Now Saturn's been asking some testing questions over the last 15 months, and at times your physical vitality may have felt lower. But also it's been pushing you to be a bit more disciplined about what you eat and drink, how you exercise, your life organisation, to eliminate the things because the sixth house is very much to do with discrimination that no longer serve your purpose. And if that trend has been developing well, the link between Saturn and Neptune in that sixth house to Venus and also Mercury suggests that you can get the right mix of attention to detail, boldness and self-confidence, which does garner greater recognition for your talents. Now also, Mars, the planet of desire, is in a terrific link with Venus as well. If you are talking about buying a property, taking a, a lease out on, on a flat, trying to raise some money for a business venture, the combination between Mars and Venus is a very positive one. But of course, these are the two planets of relating. If there is a tie in your world where your commitment is total and you're wanting to take it to that next level, perhaps moving in together, even getting spliced, that is a very, very enabling combination. But on Tuesday, Mercury makes its way into Leo. For you, this is a friendly uh, area, but it also can be a great opportunity to network, particularly around your professional hopes. But it does go into an opposition with Pluto in the part of your situation to do with your individual self-expression. Don't uh, let your flame be dimmed this week. This is a week to have maximum confidence in what makes you different, but also what you bring to the situation as a leader, as someone who's dynamic, uh, your vision, your ability to spot trends, you know, whether it is around fashion, music, your interests, or your professional role, those instincts are going to be really acute. But the new moon, which occurs on Friday, does T-square up to the nodal axis, 
which includes the south node in your sign. But the position of the north node and Chiron is in your sector of relationships. It's possible that you may have to juggle a little bit about what you want because you're a natural relator. If you really wanted to take that next step up the ladder of success in order to fit in with what's expected of you it may be there's going to be a little bit of a compromise over the following few weeks. It's been a real pleasure being with you Libra. Have a great week and if you've yet to subscribe to the channel please help it grow and do so now. Welcome Scorpio to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 1st of July for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. On the screen now I'm sharing the event chart right at the start of the week and both of your rulers, traditional Mars, modern Pluto are going to be incredibly influential. Let's focus on Mars first of all. It's in your seventh house, great for being competitive. If there is someone you're interested in, that's giving you a bit more confidence and self-belief. But also, it's linked to Venus, the planet of charm and relating in your ninth house. Suggests if you can combine with another person, a friend, a family member or a partner and do something uh, a little bit more adventurous, perhaps set up a travel plan or a holiday, your timing can be impeccable. But also Pluto, right on your fourth house cusp, has been pushing you since January the 21st to appraise your home and emotional situation. But Mercury darts into the 10th house on Tuesday asking you to think carefully about your connection to the world, perhaps even about some retraining or learning some new skills. Don't let that inner journey that you've been going through since the 21st of January inhibit your determination to raise your profile. Sometimes in life, a change really is as good as a rest. But there is a bit of a contrast for you because yours is a sign that's fixed, so you enjoy continuity but then there's another part of your nature that means that you yearn for challenges. So when change comes, it tends to come in a massive way. And I feel that there could be a situation that's starting to shape up for you, which is much more uh, adventurous, independent, and does look to bring a little more variety, but also spontaneity to your life. So if you are someone who's pretty settled in your daily routines, your emotional life, try to find some ways to just bring uh, some different texture and colour to your situation because I think you will really appreciate it. But those changes that are calling out to you could, as I mentioned, be professional. Now, by Friday, we have the new moon. If ever there was a chance to think about a college course, uh, booking that trip, or perhaps learning a language, or perhaps an, a musical instrument, or doing something completely off the cuff, this is a new moon that supports it. It's just that it does come into conflict with the nodal axis. And that for you with the north node is asking you to think about everyday practicalities. The south node is that habitual behavior we all have that can be rooted in what we feel most comfortable with, but can also be something to do with resistance or fear. So if you do feel you need to be more daring, but there's an inner voice blocking it in some way, try to overcome this. Try to really seize the moment. It's been a pleasure being with you, Scorpio. Have a great week. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, please do so now. Welcome Sagittarius to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 1st of July for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. On the screen now, I'm showing your event chart right at the start of the week. And your ruler Jupiter continues in the sign of Gemini where it's going to be for the next year. But the seventh house can be about relationships, but it can also be where we connect. And Jupiter can be about knowledge. And I feel that you could uh, coach someone or advise someone this week in a very valuable way, perhaps around their financial situation, perhaps around a practical matter. But equally, some information can come to you. Someone could be very encouraging, very supportive. And there's a great chance to exchange ideas from Tuesday when Mercury moves into your uh, fellow fire sign of Leo. The spark that creates and in the opposition to Pluto. 
suggest a very important conversation can take place, one that could really inspire you. But with Saturn in your fourth house for the last 15 months, it may have felt at times that your emotional world has felt challenging or quite cramped or limited, maybe to do with where you've lived. Maybe uh, you've been going through some transformations in that direction. But if you're building something up around where you live, doing some renovations, looking for a property and find one that fits your purpose, the link between Saturn and Venus can be very valuable. But also, Mars in your sixth house is giving you extra energy, drive, and also stamina. And its link to Venus is really interesting because in a romantic context, if you are single, you could just start to realise that there's someone creeping up on your senses who maybe doesn't make it incredibly obvious how they feel, but this person may have something about them. It's almost like an auric energy that you find very compelling. Friday's new moon, however, is terrific if you are wanting to devote yourself or invest in a relationship or financial or business matter over the following month. But it does clash with the nodal axis and the north node, the point of destiny, very much to do with encouraging you to show your flair and creativity. So even if there is something that looks positive from a financial viewpoint, don't pulverise that passion in order to chase that opportunity. It's been a real pleasure being with you, Sagittarius. Have a great week. And if you've yet to subscribe to my channel, please do so now. Welcome Capricorn to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 1st of July for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. On the screen now is your event chart at the start of the week. And there's such a, an electric connection between the planets in your seventh house of relating and how you can connect to others, including Venus, which rules this sector of the zodiac, but also your ruler Saturn in your third house of everyday communications, but Mars, the planet of passion, in your fifth house, very much to do with expressing your talents, your sense of fun, mischief, even your romantic sense of attraction. So there's a lot of positivity as this week begins, and it can continue as the week goes on. But there is on Tuesday a shift. Mercury moves into the sign of Leo which for you is house eight. That can be shared finances to do with business, can be to do with longer term planning, but also deep analysis. If there is something you want to think about very carefully, it can be quite intense for the following few days because Pluto in house two, your value, self-worth and everyday money challenges that Mercury position. So despite the fact that your, uh, your diplomacy your ability to connect to others skillfully this week is definitely shining brightly. There could be someone you encounter who's much more determined to let you know about how they think you should go about a particular situation. Now, this could be very helpful if you're talking, for example, about a financial savings or investment product. That combination of Mercury and Pluto really very positive. But if you find yourself just talking to someone that you thought it was going swimmingly well with, you might find that their values and your values actually don't mesh quite as well as you thought. And part of this can come through the prism of the new moon, which occurs on Friday. It undoubtedly gives you relationship opportunities for the next four weeks. But don't forget there's another full moon in your sign on the 21st of July. And that is going to be easier than the last one in your sign across the 21st and 22nd of June. But it is still a challenge in terms of relationships. So there is relationship potential but it has to work for you in another way. And that way comes through the guise of the nodal axis because the North Node in the fourth house is very much about your feelings, your emotions. Ironically, very Cancerian, where you've got all that seventh house energy, which can see you connecting to others so skillfully. So a great opportunity with that new moon, but it has to feel right, as well as seeming to flow between you and other people. So whether it's 
uh, one person in particular, a friend, an alliance, a business partner, or someone you really fancy, listen to your sixth sense and let that guide you. It's been a real pleasure being with you, Capricorn. Have a great week. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, please do so now. Welcome Aquarius to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 1st of July for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. On the screen now I'm showing your event chart right at the start of the week and your traditional ruler Saturn is right at the heart of the action forging a terrific link with Venus as we go into this week. Now Saturn may have asked, as I've mentioned recently, some searching questions around self-worth, values and income, particularly everyday finance over the last 15 months. But this is a week when there can be a breakout, I feel, particularly because not just Venus in Cancer, the six hours of practicalities, there's also the Sun and Mercury are influenced in a very constructive way too. If you're trying to reorder, particularly around your homes, sifting through things you no longer need, selling things off that are surplus to requirements, just generally getting a more earthing and more comfy vibe going in your situation, you're really working the energy perfectly. But Mercury moving on Tuesday into your sector of relating is exciting. And because Pluto in your sign is face to face with Mercury, there's part of you that I feel, particularly on Wednesday, you're going to be much more direct if there is an issue that you do want to air, because obviously Pluto in Aquarius air. You also have Jupiter at the start of this week in the air Gemini, which gives you the chance to use a slice of humour, uh, a little bit of devilment in terms of expressing your ideas. Whether you're trying to sweeten the pill with someone at home or at work, don't underestimate the amount of personality power you can apply to the situation. But on the whole, I feel it is a week of grappling with those more practical strands. All that brings us to the new moon on Friday. If you have been thinking about trying a new approach to your health, your fitness, your diet, your work, perhaps even considering having an addition to the family in terms of an animal, that six house energy calls out to that. But that does pivot in a T-square with the North Node and the South Node axis. And they're in the part of your chart that's very much about what you're thinking and how you're expressing your ideas. So it's important that you don't overload yourself with too much virtue with that particular new moon. Good to set some targets, but make them achievable ones over the following four weeks. Have a great week, Aquarius. Thank you for joining me. If you've yet, yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honoured if you did so now. Welcome Pisces to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 1st of July for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. The collective of energy in the sign of Cancer is really a chance for you each year to manifest and demonstrate your sparkle. And the new moon that's coming on Friday just gives you a chance to turn up the volume. What's not to like? Also, Saturn and Neptune in your sign are an incredibly powerful and helpful supporting cast because they're suggesting that whatever you do in terms of uh, going with those things where you can uh, demonstrate your flair, artistry and talents, you can do so in a meaningful way. You're not going to scatter yourself to thinly I feel there's a, a chance for you to elevate your energy but around the things that matter but there's also the cluster of energy in Taurus which is about those quick communications including the moon Mars and the very unpredictable energies of Uranus but they're all connecting into that fifth house so there's lots of chance to actuate things in an individual way those planets Saturn and Neptune in your sign Articulate the message, the energy in Taurus, but also add warmth, affection and passion to what you want to do through that fifth house energy. But Mercury does move on Tuesday into Leo. If you have been coming up with some very inspired ideas recently, the great thing about Mercury is it can help you to pack them into some kind of formula which is practical and can be long lasting. So the energy in the sign of cancer combining with the detail of Mercury moving into your sixth house is the classic 
uh, form and function formula and that's a great opportunity too. However, you could encounter someone who's a bit picky and a bit prickly and it may be about an issue that surprises you in some way. It could be linked to the past or they may make an observation about your approach which you're not expecting and that's because of Pluto going opposite Mercury, Pluto in the 12th house. But I feel we have to really focus on the positives of this week and if there is something that you're really wanting to go for that means a lot to you, whether it is a, an interest, a hobby, uh, it is a relationship, a social event, uh, go for it and go for it with all your means. And the new moon certainly gives you a great opportunity to radiate out to the maximum over the following few weeks. It's been a real pleasure being with you Pisces. Thank you for joining me. Have a great week. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be grateful if you did so now.